Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be installing the latest version of G Miner, which is version 2.74 on a Windows 10 PC. There are over 100 coins that you can mine with G Miner, and if we take a look at MinerStat, here are some of the coins that you're able to mine. To begin the setup for G Miner, you're going to want to download the latest release, so I'll show you how to do that. So let's get started. So here we are at the Windows 10 desktop and I'm going to open up my browser. I'm using Google Chrome and inside the Google search, I'm going to be searching for G Miner. And here is the GitHub link. That's definitely the one I recommend. That is the source. And I'll expand my window a bit here. And you can see that the latest version is version 2.74. So we're going to click on that and we're down over to the release section. And if you scroll down a bit here and it states all the changes that have recently happened here for the newest version. And if you scroll further down, we have the releases. So there's a release for Linux and they have a release for Windows. This is a zip file. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and let it download. So we have it downloaded right now and we can see that the file size is 52.8 megs. It's not very big. And what I'll do is I'll just show it in the downloads folder and there it is. And I'll minimize our browser. And as you can see here on my desktop, I have a minor folder. Now the minor folder has been added to the Windows exclusion list. If you don't know how to do that, you can check out this video and I'll walk you through those steps. You wanna make sure that the mining software is not being flagged by the operating system or security software. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on it and say extract. And I wanna make sure that I'm pointing this to my mining folder, which is on my desktop. Select it and extract. There we go. So now everything in here is in my mining folder and it's been added to the Windows exclusion list, so we shouldn't have any issues. So we have all the files extracted into this folder, and basically all these over here are batch files. So they're for each type of algorithm that you want to mine, and they're just listed out here. So if you wanted to say a mine beam, you'd use this batch file. If you want to mine Ravencoin, you'd use this. In this example, we're gonna mine Ethereum, so we're gonna be using this batch file. Now you have the batch files here, but the most important one that you wanna make sure you have is the miner file. Now, if you don't have this miner file, that means it might've been removed by security software and it won't run. So it's important to make sure that you have this file. Now, if you don't know what file you have here and you don't know which one's a batch file, uh, even though it does say it over here, you can view the extension by clicking this box and now you can actually see what each file is. So that might be a little bit more helpful for you. So in this example, like I'd mentioned, we're gonna be mining Ethereum. So here is the Ethereum batch file. We're gonna right click on it and select edit. And it's a pretty simple file. And there's only a few things that we have to modify here. So we have the minor exe file that it's gonna be using and the algorithm is ethash, which is for Ethereum. And now we need to provide the server and we need to provide our wallet address. So now I'm just gonna open up Ethermine. So Ethermine is one of the biggest pools in the world for mining Ethereum probably one of the better sources to go to. Uh, if you click on start mining over here in the corner, we have the servers that you can select. And now basically what you wanna do for this is just select one that's geographically closer to you. So I'm in Canada and so these two North American servers are gonna be best. Because I'm on the east side, I'm gonna go ahead and use this one as my primary one. Some miners will have primary and secondary uh, servers, so you could put in two. But as you see in this batch file, it's only asking for one. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna paste in my server. And now I need to make sure that the port number is entered as well. And the port for this one is gonna be 4444. Okay. Next, what you wanna do is put in your wallet address. That is the user and that's how you're gonna identify yourself with this. So we're gonna highlight this and we're gonna delete it. And then we're gonna put in our wallet address. Okay, so I have my wallet. I'm gonna paste it in. Now, if you don't have a wallet of your own and you're looking for one, you can check out my videos for Exodus, which is an excellent free wallet that works really well. You're gonna go in there and you're gonna get your wallet address for Ethereum, and then you're gonna paste it in. Now that we have everything in here that we need, we just need to go to the file menu and save it. So our changes have been saved and we can go ahead and close this window. We're done with the browser as well. But just to mention what you will be doing later on is when you're trying to find how much you're earning, you have the miner address up here, which is your wallet address. And all you have to do is just paste it in and then enter it. Now I don't have anything running right now, so it says it's an active, but in here, it's gonna tell you your unpaid balance, your estimated earnings for Ethereum daily, weekly, and then monthly. And it'll plot it on the graph and let you know what your hash rate is and everything else. Okay, so let me just uh, close out of this now. And what we can do is go back into our mining folder and now all we need to do is run our miner. So in order for us to run the miner and start mining, we need to right click on the batch file that we just created and then click on run as administrator. Say yes to the prompt. And now your miner will start mining. 
So that's it. That's all you have to do to mine Ethereum using Gminer on a Windows 10 PC. It's pretty straightforward. You just need to edit the batch file. Make sure that when you're changing the details inside the batch file, you're not actually deleting any extra commas. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, you can go ahead and put them in the comments below. It does take me a little bit of time, but I do try to answer as many questions as I can. And if you found this video useful, please subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to grow it as big and reach as many people as I can. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.